Welcome back to the channel guys. In this week's episode, we not only rack up over a thousand kilometers of almost dead straight road, but also cross the notorious Nullarbor region between South and West Australia. The A1 highway follows the rugged coastal cliffs and crosses an almost treeless desert, which we will explore along the way. We show you some epic sand dunes and explore the deep secrets not many people know about when taking this long and exhausting stretch of remoteness. So stay tuned and let's get to it. I can't help to notice how good the roads are in uh, South Australia. Yeah. And we noticed that um, as well, obviously, well, we didn't notice it in WA because we always drive in WA, mm. but when we came to Queensland, the roads were shocking. Yeah, horrible. And, uh, now coming back to South Australia, WA sort of way, the road's beautiful. There is no potholes, there's no ruts in them. No bumps. I can let go of my steering wheel and I'm going perfectly straight. All right, we're now heading to Fowler Bay and some massive white sand dunes. Yay. And you can see them now in the in the distance here. They're absolutely amazing. And they remind me of Lancelin where we live mm. um, in, in WA. WA. We've got a lot of these sand dunes and we used to love going camping there and sandboarding. Mm. So this is the first time for over a year now. Yeah. Oh, a lot more than a year. Yes, signal lost. I know. Yeah, so it's been more than a year since we've seen sand dunes like that and they are super white. They look like snow, snowy mountains from the distance. The Fowler Bay sand dunes are part of the Fowler Bay Conservation Park and a great place to fish, four-wheel drive and of course explore. There are a few campsites in this area as well as a caravan park but due to the wind we had in the last couple of days we decided to give them a miss and go for some fun in the sand dunes instead. This is the start of the Nullarbor um, and have a look outside and see what, how the vegetation has changed. It's an absolute plain field, it looks a bit like the desert, there's no trees anywhere in sight and it goes, um, I think it's probably another 600 kilometres or so, just a dead straight road with the ocean being on the left at the moment and the desert on the right.
after a few hours driving, it was time to make a little pit stop. And where better to do that than at the Nullarbor Roadhouse. A great place to get out of your seat, refuel, and have a look at that little museum they had. Before it was time to go again and hit the next few hundred kilometers towards West Australia. It wasn't long before we saw our first flock of wild camels in the distance. I love these creatures and did you know that Australia has the world's largest camel population? And unfortunately due to the lack of natural predators they are even considered a pest in many places. The roads are so straight and boring that we did a time lapse and the sun went down before we came across our first bend in the road. You could think this is a normal highway but no, this is not only a normal highway this is also an airfield. <laughs> and as the road flying doctors here in Australia use this as their landing pad. It's on the main road, so you've got to look out for airplanes here a little bit. So this is one of the uh, many viewpoints where you can actually have a look at the uh, cliff drop. Mm. And this one is just next to the main road, so we go and uh, have a look. Although the weather is not very good today, it will we we'll still probably get a good look at it. It's like cloudy and windy today. That's the crit right next on here. Not far. 10 meters. And we're going to go at the end there, at the tip there, the lookout view. Right on top of the cliff. Look at this. Ah, oh, cool. Shasha tried to get the best photo shot. <laughs> There are plenty of places to stop along the way, but now it was time for us to find a place of rest and we could camps being our constant go-to app for finding a good spot. So we're trying to find a place to stay for the night. We're not going to quite make it over the border, but that's all right. We never tended to. Um, we had uh, a couple of spots in mind to pull over, but somehow they were all closed off. So we're just now towards sunset uh, just trying to find a spot near the cliff's edge <coughs> and uh, set up camp for the night have some dinner and then tomorrow we'll head on into WA there somewhere there somewhere along there we're gonna camp there we go we're set up and look at this right next to There you go, that was our campsite last night, or still is our campsite actually. What a beautiful spot, and it's surprisingly that there wasn't a lot of wind. We had a few gusts coming through that were shaking the camper trailer, but other than that, it was actually a pretty nice sleep. It wasn't super cold, it wasn't super windy, it was just nice. A bit cloudy obviously, but didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you got to be a bit careful with these um, rock edges there. I just flown the drone and I noticed that a lot of this stuff, that edge here, there's actually nothing underneath it. So it's just sort of suspended in the air. And um, as you can see there, they do snap off. So they do break. And yeah, you just got to be a bit cautious. So all this stuff here, there's actually, it's just a ledge that's sort of overhanging. You can probably see it a bit better there. And yeah, just be mindful of that. Otherwise, it's a pretty deep drop. I reckon that's easily 50 meters down there. There you go, our little campsite. There's a few camps around here. 
And most people just pull up for the ride, I guess. There is a few more over there. They're all gone already. Um, and the same as us. We're going to pack up now. We're going to hit the border village, cross into uh, our good old state of WA. Um, we're going to go and check and see what we can bring over and whatnot. I'm not quite sure. I know veggies, fresh fruit and veggies is sort of a no-go. Um, we got some lemons, I guess they probably have to go, unfortunately, um, which is a bummer because we got oysters <laughs> and we haven't been able to to eat them last night. We just sort of set up and had a quick meal and it was it was a bit cold last night, eh Jenny? Yeah, could not have oyster or prawn. So sad. Part of it was my fault. I sort of had no patience of shucking oysters last night. <laughs> Normally we buy, we chuck it, and he said this time, no, we just buy, no need to chuck it. Yes, and that's a good idea because if you shuck the oysters, they die, or they're dead. If you don't shuck the oysters, they're still alive, and you can keep them in the fridge for a lot longer. Anyway, let's get packed up, and uh, let's hit the border town of WA. Yes. Yeah, can't wait to get home. <laughs> there we go, we're back in Western Australia, and behind us here is the quarantine area. Um, so we're just uh, checking what we can bring and what not. We're a bit uncertain. We just found out that we can bring our oysters in there, which is good. And uh, Ginny's just checking on her chilies and things like that. So I guess we'll just find out. We'll go over there and ask the guys. And then, um, yeah, make sure we can uh, bring bring some of the fruit and veggies in. So if it's frozen, um, you can bring it in. That's what I gathered. And um, if it's refrigerated, only some items. As long as they have no soil either. We'll figure it out now. Guess we'll have a look. Oh, we're back in WA. Woohoo! Yes. <laughs> back in it. the best state of Australia. Yeah. Home state of Western Australia. How good is it? Okay, yeah. super stoked with that. Little note on the quarantine area. So you pull in there and then they'll come and check all your uh, stuff, fridges, and boxes, and whatever you got. They'll do a little random inspection. So let them know what you got and they'll tell you what you have to chuck away or not. So we had to be Jenny's chilies, yeah. kaffir lime leaves, and lemon. And then lemon for the oysters. <laughs> so we'll probably keep the oysters until we get some lemon, huh? Yeah, I think we can find lemon is the next town. What town? <laughs> <laughs> There's no town for the next 500 kilometers. I doubt that, but we'll find out. So now we're making our way to Ashbridge. That's the plan. We're not going to make it all the way, I think. Um, so it's going to be another roadside stop. On the way, we're going to have a look at some caves that I found that are on the sides. There were in wiki cams. So you got to check them out, baby. Yeah. And then, oh, the road is not so bad. But the road's pretty good, actually. You have to go to the cave. Oh. You know, when, we go, when you're out from the main road, you stay. And we'll find out about that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, at the moment, it's just a very long drive through WA till we get to Ashbridge. There's a couple of roadhouses along the way, but yeah, it's going to be a mundane thing of driving, mm. listening to a podcast. Yeah. It's just killing time. Killing time, rubbish, not our thing. We decided to take a detour and explore one of the caves we found on a traveler's note. Most commonly known caves along the way are just basic overhangs or close to the public if they pose any danger. But there was not much we found on the one we are heading to now. It was a fair bit off the highway and so we thought this could be rather interesting. Here we go. Now we are at Madura Cave. Doesn't look like much of a cave from here, does it? Yeah. Let's go have a look and see what this is all about. Lots of birds. Like it just looks like an Indian in the middle of sort of no, but check it out. Did it come across this? Bloody interesting. You wouldn't know it unless you're like 50 metres away from it, then you'll, you'll see it sort of like an indent. It looks like a sinkhole, like something collapsed. And obviously that this all Look at that here. There's a hole in here as well. Look, oh, yeah, oh. Look at that. Oh, oh deep. And see, till we get the fresh line, I can Oh, there's a bird come out just there here. Yes, we have water. Wow, look at that. So we noticed when we pulled over here, 
a um, bit earlier that this whole area is covered with shells. So a while ago, well, thousands of years ago, I'd say, this all would have been underwater. And that's where probably this limestone comes about. And what happens is the limestone get washed out and then obviously creates these caves and the water runs through them. Well, okay, there's more to explore. We need proper caving equipment. be correct otherwise we can walk in there or I can have water underneath there that's why the birds sleep in here Wow! Mm. beautiful go to the camp just are already inside Go to your knee level. <laughs> Try to shine the light so your guy can see inside the cave house look like. Yeah, let me adjust the light first. Alright, someone tried to make campfire in here. That water with below there. See the wet. Wow, look at that, there's another hole there. Oh, I thought that was deep. Oh, another bedroom. Hmm. Can move in. Mm -hmm. Could be in there. Ooh, the hole continues deep inside. Is it? Mm. A small one. Snake on this side can throw in there. Look at this fine dust, this fine sand. Wow, this just keeps going. The firewood in here. Wow, it's a whole scene. Wow, that's a huge chamber here. Mine fresh lice. Caving always is you've got to have a bit more um, gear and otherwise you can get quite dangerous so you don't know the uh, carbon monoxide levels in some of the caves and you've probably seen some cavers that were sort of um, either an alarm or back in the days it was um, a candle and if the candle would go out that would mean there is no oxygen left to breathe mm -hmm. and then you have to get out of there as quickly as possible which we don't have unfortunately so be a bit cautious. We're going, wow, look at that, it just keeps going. Look at this. 
even that there's animals down here, I think it's really safe. Mm. This will definitely feel water, I reckon. Mm. Yeah, it just keeps going down there. Wow. Look at that. This must be washed in here. Mm -hmm. Probably the water. That's it at the end. Not bad. People just drop a secret button in there. Keeps going. Look down there. Live down here. Mm. Look at this crystal white. Look at this, there's a crystal here, Jenny. Crystal, yeah. This is all crystals. Mm. Look at this. Mm. White crystals here. I wonder if that's salt. It is. It is salt. Hello. This is salt, guys. <laughs> This is all salt. That's it. Yeah. This is a whole layer of salt. Hmm. This is all salt. Wow. Yeah. First it does crystal, but not this is salt. Look, the big shell there. Look at the shell here. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. That must be very old. A billion? Look at all this. A billion year. Big <laughs> shell. Oh, cool. Just following uh, the trail of the water, and it seems to disappear just in here, just in that in that hole down there. That's where it seems to go. Look a little closer to this. Oh, look at all this up here. Must keep going. There's no other way to explain it. Look at that. Oh. And it keeps going for a fair bit. Look at that, that's definitely like an old crustite. Yeah, there's another one, another flat one there. Yeah. See that? <laughs> Hello, mate. <laughs> so we found another cave. Which is just just behind the other one. That's a bit bigger and uh, yeah, look at that. Looks like the place where the animals come to die. How peaceful is this? And given all this black smudge up here, I don't know if that means they had fires in here. And um it's warmer. Yeah, this looks burned. This looks like a place where people would have a fire. Yeah, look at the animals, the kangaroos. Now they just, they don't look like they've been eaten. 
They look more like they've just come to die here. Because if you think about it, a kangaroo has no natural predator anymore. Yeah, it could get bitten by a snake, you know, or um, could get run over by a car. But they all have a life to live and they all die. So where do they go to die? And that seems like a plausible cause. And we've seen that before at, um, what was the name? Yeah, we've seen that before, the Gammon Ranges, where there was just an area where it looks like the animals would go to die. Look at this, amazing. I don't know what this black stuff up here is. If that's a fungi or if that's due to a fire. But again, it looks like water would come in here and then, I don't know, seep through the ground in the back here. Yeah, look at that. Look at these. There's a young one and an old one just laying next to each other. That's strange. Yeah, so how cool is that? I just love exploring those places that are not filled with regulations and tape do not go here and signs and whatnot just left to your own devices and to your own sort of um respect of danger not, not going beyond your limits you know like caves you've got to have respect for them i remember a story many many years ago in thailand as a expedition leader and there was a, a couple of guides who actually took some tourists into one of the caves they had no proper training and they never made it back out they all died of um carbon monoxide poisoning from memory just a huge sinkhole i'm just going having a look and see if there's any more indications of anything similar because there is a lot of these sinkholes in the area and um, this is just the only one we come across that was um sort of fitted into our time frame and we did want to see these caves a lot of them are closed off from what i know um for obvious reasons and uh, luckily some of them, like these ones, are still, you know, not closed off and you'll be able to go and explore on your own. Right. Give that a go if you're up here. Definitely worth having a look. Amazing stuff down here. Um, and I'll probably put a little bit of drone shot in here now. Show you the magnitude, the vastness of this area. And that's it again for this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. And if so, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. It helps us as content creators to bring you more epic adventures on our travels around Australia. We hope to see you in our next episode. And until then, why not check out some of our other adventures? Thanks for watching and safe travels.